Sorry about the audio, still trying to work out this audio situation. So this is part two of a two-part series on AI stealing your job. Resources used were Leopold Ash and Brennan's Situational Awareness Series and Leopold's Conversation with Dwarkesh. AI will probably steal your job sooner than you think and why it might matter, the path to superintelligence. So in the last essay, we introduced Leopold Aschenbrenner, a very, very interesting 23-year-old Columbia graduate who was recently hired and then fired from OpenAI. His situational awareness series unpacks some potential paths and timelines toward general intelligence and super intelligence. So I wanted to share and explain in simple terms a few of Leopold's big insights and predictions. Firstly, to highlight the magnitude of the situation I think the world is in right now. And secondly, to help make sense of how a changing world might impact you and your life. So I'm going to preface this by saying three things. Number one, there is a serious lack of understanding into what artificial intelligence is and how it works. Many people think that artificial intelligence is just a new technology. It is fundamentally different than other technologies. ChatGPT and other language models like Claude and Llama, they're not some standalone out-of-the-box new technology. They're the latest incarnation of an alien intelligence that's been brewing for the past 70 years. We're talking about an alien intelligence that is capable of learning and improving by itself, learning models of the world and the human experience and interacting within that world. Designing the systems is much more like watering a plant than it is building a robot. I shared an essay about this a week or so ago, just really breaking down how an LLM works. And uh, here's Andre Kapathy explaining explaining um, language models. Okay, let's now switch gears to how does this network work? How does it actually perform this next word prediction task? What goes on inside it? Well, this is where things complicate a little bit. This is kind of like the schematic diagram of the neural network. Um, if we kind of like zoom in into the toy diagram of this neural net, this is what we call the transformer neural network architecture. And this is kind of like a diagram of it. Now, what's remarkable about these neural nets is we actually understand uh, in full detail the architecture. We know exactly what mathematical operations happen at all the different stages of it. Uh, the problem is that these 100 billion parameters are dispersed throughout the entire neural network. And so basically, these billion parameters uh, of billions of parameters are throughout the neural net. And all we know is how to adjust these parameters iteratively to make the network as a whole better at the next word prediction task. So we know how So the second thing to, to share before we get into the essay and Leopold's work is that binary definitions and concepts are not very helpful. Binary definitions and static milestones, for example, when will we have AGI, they're limited. It's more helpful to think of progress existing on some kind of spectrum. So our current artificial intelligence is toward the narrow end of the spectrum. It's designed to perform very specific tasks, recognizing faces in photos, translating languages, or recommending movies through next word prediction. Artificial general intelligence. This is the ability to understand, learn, and apply knowledge across a wide range of tasks in ways similar to, to humans. So we're already seeing and experiencing the early stages of general intelligence. AI game models like MuZero, which I'll link to, display increasingly general intelligence. The newest and biggest language models and transformer architectures like ChatGPT and Claude have clearly developed an ability to map meaning, context, and make sense of the world through human language. This is up for debate, and there's an argument to be made that language models may have taken us off course, uh, but I'll leave that for another conversation. And then superintelligence would be much smarter than human intelligence. This is the far end of the spectrum and the capability in every domain would exceed that of humans. For this reason, it's incredibly hard for us to conceptualize how that might look. So regardless of whether or not you believe that we'll see a truly human-like general intelligence or how you think language models are progressing, it's becoming increasingly clear that we are hurtling toward the super end of the intelligence spectrum. And then the last thing to preface is that there's many possible ways that this plays out. It's possible that the progress of AI is underwhelming, that we realize a human-like general intelligence is not something we can replicate. 
It's possible that we don't see the required compute algorithmic improvements, data, capital, or energy to create a general or super intelligence within the decade. It's also possible that regulation, fear, conflict, these things slow innovation. But on the current trajectory, we're going to have some form of alien intelligence that will change the world beyond comprehension within the decade, maybe sooner. So at this point, the forces that are pushing us toward the creation of an artificial general intelligence and super intelligence, they seem far stronger than those opposing forces. So Leopold's argument for rapid progress towards super intelligence. Leopold's argument, in a nutshell, is that most of the world is severely underrating the possibility that we move toward the superintelligence end of the spectrum within the decade, and what this is going to entail. Even higher for the AI economy, but yeah, I mean it depends. I think again, and it's all of this stuff. You know, I have a lot of uncertainty, right? So a lot of the time, I'm trying to kind of tell the modal story because I think it's important to be kind of concrete and visceral about sure. it. Sure, and I, you know. I have I have a lot of uncertainty basically over how the 2030s play out, and basically the thing I know is it's going to be fucking crazy. Um, but but you know exactly what you know where the bottlenecks are and so on. I think that'll be kind of like so. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's talk through the numbers here. Yeah. You hundreds of million. It's going to be fucking crazy. If his predictions are right, we're going to start experiencing the forces of this progress within a matter of years, not decades. But this is not just job displacement. National security intervention, WMDs, weapons of mass destruction, geopolitical tensions, and a complete restructuring of global economies will be locked in a race to superintelligence. The, th the thing I found most compelling about Leopold's work, uh, obviously there's some controversy happening on Twitter at the moment, the thing I find compelling about his work is that his predictions for how things might play out aren't just theoretical assumptions. They're predictions based on two uh, interesting and valuable things. A a very deep understanding of the technology, how it's progressing from within the labs. He was only just recently fired from OpenAI. Uh, and he's hanging around with a lot of the people that are building these models. And B, a higher level understanding of the economic and geopolitical forces that might push progress towards superintelligence. So here are the big insights and predictions. I've simplified them to make them easier to understand. And apologies in advance for any misrepresentations of the original work. I'd actually recommend that you you read and watch uh, Situational Awareness and listen to the podcast with Dorkesh in your own time. So the first thing is UMS, orders of magnitude, unhobblings, and the trillion dollar cluster. Uh, so yeah. it's, you know, both that are important. The other thing I'll say is like, in all of this stuff, I think the magnitudes are really, really important, yeah. right? So, you know, we talked about a 10X of research effort or maybe 10, 30X over a decade. You know, even without any kind of like self-improvement type loop, you know, we talk the sort of even in the sort of GPT-4 to AGI story, we're talking about an order of magnitude of effective inc compute increase a year, right? Half an order of magnitude of compute, half an order of magnitude of uh, algorithmic progress. That sort of translates into yeah. effective compute, and so um, you're doing a 10x a year, right? Basically on your labor force, right? So it's like it's a radically different world if you're doing a 10x or a 30x in a century versus a 10x a year on your labor force. So the magnitudes really matter. They also really matter on the sort of intelligence explosion, right? So like just the automated AI research part. So you know one story you could tell there is like, well, ideas get harder to find, right? Algorithmic progress is going to get harder. Yeah, right now you have the easy wins, but in like four or five years, there'll be fewer easy wins. So for these systems to become more intelligent, to move further along the intelligence spectrum, we need to one, increase the raw compute power, which is more power and processes to train and run the models. Think of those data centers. And number two, we need to develop and design better methods and techniques for the systems to process data and learn more efficiently. This is the algorithmic progress. Scaling laws can get very confusing very quickly, but all you really need to know is that these two combined improvements, they're the compute increase and algorithmic improvements, have resulted in roughly a full um order of magnitude or 10x, and um means 10x improvement each year for the past five to 10 years. To help conceptualize this, it's hard to conceptualize. Imagine reading one full textbook on a subject this year. Next year, you read 10 textbooks and your ability to understand and conceptualize the ideas improves 10x. By year 10, you're effectively reading and comprehending the equivalent of 10 billion textbooks in a single year with an ability to understand and synthesize information beyond anything a human could ever imagine. So this is 
obviously an overly simplified example of exponential growth with some mistakes. Um, and AI is going to have many bottlenecks. It won't apply directly, but you should get the gist. The simple fact that the scaling laws have held true so far means that we're on track to create a trillion dollar cluster, which is basically advanced computing infrastructure to support and develop artificial intelligence. We're going to create this within the next five to 10 years. So trillion is a colossal amount of money and energy. Well, the trillion is a colossal amount of money and we're going to need a colossal amount of energy to make this work more than the GDP and energy consumption of a mid-sized country like Denmark, Sweden. In addition to the raw compute and algorithmic improvements, there is the potential for further adjustments and discoveries that can unlock capabilities in existing AI models. For example, RLHF, which is reinforcement learning with human feedback, uh, that was a massive unlock or unhobbling. We're adding a small amount of human feedback to the training process, drastically, drastically improved accuracy and relevance. So the improvement trajectory we've talked about so far, the unhobblings, that's already looking insanely steep without any additional major unlocks or the unhobblings. Number two, the automated AI researcher, AGI, and the intelligence explosion. And gigawatt cluster, like intelligent, maybe you have like one more year where you're kind of doing some final unhobbling to fully unlock it. Then you have the intelligence explosion. And meanwhile, the like trillion dollar cluster is almost finished. And then you like, and then you do your super intelligence on your trillion dollar cluster, or you run it on your trillion dollar cluster. And by the way, you have not just your trillion dollar cluster, but like, you know, hundreds of millions of GPUs on inference clusters everywhere. And this isn't result, like I, I think private, but in, the, in the, this world, I think private companies the, have the capital and can yeah, raise capital the thing, to do it. The thing you will need the government force to do it fast. You know, well, wait, wait, I, I was just about to ask, like, wouldn't it be the, like, we know private companies are on track to be able to do this and be trying. So Leopold predicts that we will move further along the intelligence spectrum long before we hit the trillion dollar cluster. So early as next year, we'll have what he calls drop in agents with increasingly general intelligence. I, this is not just the chatbot or the chat interface you see with chat GPT. Uh, this means you'll be literally taking calls and delegating tasks to coworkers who aren't human. And that's if you're lucky, maybe you'll be delegated tasks by managers who aren't human. This is a quote from the paper. Note, I think, think that it's pretty likely we'll only need a $100 billion cluster or less for AGI. The trillion dollar cluster might be what we'll train and run superintelligence on or what we'll use for AGI if AGI is harder than expected. In any case, in a post-AGI world, having the most compute will probably still really matter. So this is where things start getting a little scary. Currently the 10X yearly improvements we're seeing are half the contribution of human AI researchers enhancing the algorithms. So these are the algorithmic tweets, tweaks made by humans that make up half of this um, order of magnitude improvement. If we have agents with increasingly general intelligence, we'll also have automated AI researchers. Millions of AI researchers, and the millions is just to give you an idea, it won't literally be millions of researchers. Uh, millions of them, without the constraints of a biological human meat sack, no lunch breaks, no holidays, no workspace meetings, no workspace safety meetings, what happens then? If algorithmic progress is already on this steep trajectory, with hundreds of mere human AI researchers, maybe thousands, I don't know how many AI researchers we have now. What is gonna happen when we have millions of increasingly intelligent AI researchers? So this is basically the intelligence explosion. There's an argument to be made that once you have the automated AI researcher, you're gonna solve robotics very quickly and then things start moving very, very, very fast. So the third point and the last point is one on geopolitical tensions, national security, and the AI arms race. And this is something I don't think many people are talking about so far. Project as well. But I think, I mean, I think the sort of alignment angle during the intelligence explosion, it's gonna, you know, it's not a process of like years of bureaucracy and then you can kind of write some standards. I think it looks much more like basically a war and like you have a fog of war. It's like, look, it's like, is it safe to do the next oom? You know, and it's like, ah, you know, like, you know, we're like three ooms into the intelligence explosion. We don't really understand what's going on anymore. Um, you know, the, um, um, uh, you know, like a bunch of our like generalization scaling curves are like kind of looking not great. You know, some of our like automated AI researchers that are doing alignment are saying it's fine, but we don't quite trust them in this test. You know, the like the AI started doing naughty things and, 
ah, but then we like hammered it out and then it was fine. And I'm like, ah, should we, should we go ahead? Should we take, you know, another six months? Also, by the way, you know, like China just stole the weights or we, you know, they're about to like deploy the Roma army. Like, what do we do? I think it's this, I think it is this crazy situation. Um, and, um, you know, basically. So our current global world order is precariously glued together by the reality that the US has the biggest guns. If you zoom out far enough, history is just one big repeating loop of empires rising to power, usually through military dominance before they come crashing down. So with or without this intelligence explosion we're talking about, leading the race to super intelligence will literally mean global dominance and world order for the next century. So it feels inevitable that at some point national security is going to make the development of artificial intelligence their number one priority. Leopold shares, again, rather convincingly, how unlikely it is that government and national security and Lockheed Martin and co, how unlikely it is that they won't be intimately involved with the companies creating super intelligence. If growth continues, we'll likely see a century's worth of military and WMD, weapons of mass destruction, compressed into less than a decade. That bit's important. It's going to be a century's worth of military progress in less than a decade and maybe even more compressed than this he predicts that the best case scenario is one in which the u.s has a leading edge on ai development and the worst would be an all-out arms race with china so the situation sounds eerily familiar to that of the manhattan project and the development of nuclear arms that was the u.s government's research project during world war ii you know i don't like it you know, I wish I wish the thing we use the ASI for is to like, you know, cure the diseases and do all the good in the world. But it is my prediction that sort of like by the in the end game, what will be at stake will not just be kind of cool products, but what will be at stake is like whether liberal democracy survives, like whether the CCP survives, like what the world order for the next century will be. And when that is at stake, forces will be activated that are sort of way beyond what we're talking about now. And like you know, in in the sort of like crazy race at the end, like the sort of national security implications will be the most important. You know, sort of like, you know, World War II. Closing thoughts. Uh, I hope, I really hope that things don't play out like this. I hope progress slows and we have time to adjust accordingly, both as individuals within local communities and as a globally connected human civilization, living with these new forms of intelligence. I really hope we get to experience all the magical potentials of advanced intelligence and AI. I'm also a realist, so I'll be monitoring the rate of progress toward increasingly general intelligence.